Hello, everyone, and welcome to this month's um, Artist Spotlight. We're here today with William Christofferson, or Bill, as, as I know you. Um, many of you might be familiar with Bill and his work. Um, through a lot of his, his work is actually on display at the Orion Gallery there in Watertown, but you also might have seen him around um, painting plein air. Um, it, you, you seem to go everywhere in the North Country painting plein air. Um, one of the most well-known in the Jefferson County area, at least, with plein air. It's a very enjoyable medium and, and a pursuit to go out and paint outdoors. It's just something I enjoy. I've learned to enjoy it over the years. That's fabulous. So actually, let's let's start from there. Let's say, how did you become an artist? Well, um, I never really was into art during my high school years. Um, the first dabble I got into the art was at my landscape architecture program at Syracuse ES, at SUNY ESF. And we actually had a basic art course required. Um, great professor, his name, as I recall, is Professor Shelsey back then. And he introduced us to all the different mediums, uh, how to make a palette, how to mix colors with acrylics and things like that. And so that that's where I really started. I did my first crude original acrylics in his class. And we had figure drawing and various different mediums. And, and so... From there, I, I really didn't uh, pursue it. You know, I was into my design career, basically. And when I got into the, uh, my, the meat of my career at the New York State Parks, Thousand Isles region, um, the beauty of the parks just mm -hmm. kind of motivated me to get out there and try to do a little sketching here and there. And, yeah. The, the, uh, I know so many artists, similarly, who see the islands and just get inspired. And then, but and then um, my wife at that time, she got into a lot of craft shows back in the late 1980s, and mm -hmm. she was at a craft show down in um, Sackets Harbor. And next to her was a, an artist named Dean Richards. You remember Dean Richards? I think so. Yeah, he, yeah. He yeah. He, and, he, and he was selling a lot of sketches of the historical buildings in Sackets Harbor and, yeah. um, and some prints of that. He's doing really well. And my wife said, you know, you, you can do really good at that. And I said, you know, I think I can. And I started doing some sketching of some of the lighthouses of the state parks and some of the pavilions and things like that, historical structures. And so in the early 1990s, around 1991, 92, that's when I started, you know, getting into more mainstream type artwork. I joined the North Country Artists Guild back then. Remember the North Country Artists mm -hmm. Guild? Mm -hmm. And with Marie Inglesby. And, that's awesome. And, uh, yeah, then I I, um, I tried to delve a little beyond just drawing and pen and ink, which I which is basically what I was doing in the early mm -hmm. '90s, and I took a course at your gallery there with Hans Junga. Mm -hmm. Oh was, yeah, yeah. He was such a talented watercolor. Amazing watercolors. And it's just a medium I learned to love. I love to do watercolor. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I do a mix of oils and watercolors, but mm -hmm. uh, watercolor is very challenging, and it's like a chess match to do that. So yeah, yeah. I enjoy. It. Would you would you say you have a favorite medium between watercolor and oil? It's tough to draw between watercolor and oil. I love doing both of them. Mm -hmm. um, watercolor is easier to work with. Um, it's a more difficult medium because it's very unforgiving. Yeah. Once you put watercolor down on the paper, it's there. You, you know, it's there. Um, but um, both mediums are great. Uh, oil for me, when I get out in plein air events and things like that, it, it's messier. You know, mm -hmm. Oil for me. <laughs> full of oil patches and things like that so yeah. but both of them I, I i can't say i have exactly one preference over one or the other but yeah I, I really enjoy doing both of those i used to do a lot of acrylics but now i'm mostly into just basically watercolor or oil yeah and, and i go through phases i switch back and forth and i'm kind of assuming it seems to be that watercolor is the primary medium for plein air just uh, I would say oil, actually. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, most of the artists that I interact with at some of the events I go to, um, they're oil people. Oh, awesome. You know, artists that you know, like Jan Byington. Yeah. Chelsea yeah. Leon and uh, Terrell Gable and uh, yeah. the whole bunch. They, they all paint in oil. Oh, wow. That's and, interesting. And I like, to, yeah. I like to, when I go to a plein air event, mm -hmm. I pick out the medium I want to work with, and then I stock up on supplies for that medium. So. Mm -hmm. To this afternoon, I'm on my way up to Morristown to register for the Morristown. Oh, season. fabulous. And Yay. my medium of choice is watercolor. <laughs> what? When is that happening? 
It starts uh, tonight, actually. Oh, it does. Oh my! So you'll be painting yeah. like this this coming few days, then. I, I we we have to register this evening. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure if we're allowed to paint tonight or yeah. not, but it's definitely starting tomorrow, all day Thursday, Friday. Oh, Saturday. fun! I hope yeah. the weather's good for you. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so what part of your creative process is your favorite, and what part is the most challenging or you don't like? Well, I would say. The part of um, being an artist and producing artworks for me, the the most disagreeable portion would be framing and matting. I <laughs> I'm just not into framing and matting. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I've uh, over the years I've learned. You know what? I'm an artist. Take my work and go to a frame shop and have it done professionally. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And it, it's it's a little more, it's way more expensive, but in, you know in the end you end up with a really good product that way. Yeah. So yeah. I guess framing and matting. Another thing I. I, I really um, regret is on some of my artworks overworking an artwork. You know, you get to a certain oh. point and even if you're painting plein air, you get to a certain point and you just have to stop. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, you can ruin an artwork by continuing on too much. And that, it's happened quite a few times with me. Mm -hmm. with most artists probably. Mm -hmm. You have to learn when to draw the line. I, it's funny. Yeah. I've I've tried pottery a handful of times on the wheel that is always my issue. I, I make a beautiful form and then I just have to keep going a little and then destroy the whole thing. So yeah, I know that feeling very well. <laughs> so which part is your, your favorite? Um, well, um, I thought about that and mm -hmm. I guess plein air is my favorite. I, you know, the funny thing is uh, when I first started doing artwork back in the early 90s, um, I was more architectural, more rigid, and I, mm -hmm. and I did a lot of studio work. And um, more draftsman draftsmanship, draftsmanship type yeah. artworks. Yeah. And um, when we formed the Second Cyber Art Center back in 1999, the president at that time, Dave Hunkins, said, you know, there's a new medium out there. Um, people are out there in California doing plein air events. And we've got to try to start doing that. So he talked me into going out and painting plein air. And I was very self-conscious. Yeah. I didn't want to be seen in public. I'm thinking, who somebody might see me out here playing their painting. Yeah. And, like, who, uh, wants, who wants to show an unfinished piece? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's like very so, vulnerable. Yeah. So we we kept that plein air show going. It was one of the very first ones around here. And we kept it going. And over the years, it just I, I've kind of learned to enjoy the experience so much. People come around and talk, you meet people and, mm -hmm. and you, you show them how you're working and they comment. It, it's just fun being out there. So I guess that's probably one of my most favorite aspects of yeah. the art world going, going out to the different events and painting plein air yeah uh, now probably more of my most of my artwork is done through plein air at least going out and sketching mm -hmm. on site uh, before i do an artwork even if it's in the studio i'll go out and sketch it on site yeah, yeah. and and you probably do you say mainly in kind of like the north country area or or do you do plein air anywhere um i plein air painted actually even in santorini Ooh, oh my gosh, that was probably fabulous. From the balcony yeah. of our from the balcony of our hotel balcony overlooking the caldera of the volcano. Oh jeez. Oh my gosh. I, dream. If I travel down to Florida or even Maine, I've been in Maine. Yeah. I'm a lot in the Adirondacks. I'll bring my sketchbook with me. Sometimes I'll actually bring my my uh, easel mm -hmm. and paint right up. You know, I I go wherever I go, it's what I try to do. Oh, that's fabulous. So, Bill, what um, is your professional goal and, and where do you envision your art going? Um, I, I think every artist uh, strives to learn and grow, adapt new techniques and, mm -hmm. and, and um, look at the work of other artists. There's so many talented artists in our area here and uh, learn from them. And, um, you know, even, even if you've been doing art for 20, 30 years, you still can, can keep learning and keep growing. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm actually taking a plein air workshop with with um, Patricia Bella Rose from Montreal this coming next next Monday or Tuesday oh, in Clayton. Wow, she's, yeah. she's a well known plein air artist. And, yeah. Uh, and then in, in the other aspect of it, um, I guess I'm in a a, a, a a private business, the Orion Art Gallery Studio, and it's very very hard to establish a small business and make it grow. And so that's probably where my main emphasis will be over the next few years mm -hmm. is to, you know, keep keep them building the brand of our gallery, mm -hmm. and, you know, expanding on our art class selections and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of your gallery, you guys recently moved. 
yes, we moved 327 Mellon Street here in Watertown. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, when you're in the Thousand Islands area, like where you are mm -hmm. and where we were up on Route 12 and our original last year, our Ryan Gallery was on Route 12. Mm -hmm. um, your seasons change. I mean, the, the peak season is in the summer. It's and true. And in the winter, there's not much. Everybody going leaves. <laughs> yeah. But what I've learned here in Watertown is it, when you're in the city like this, it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. In the summer, people leave the city, they're out on vacation places, and it's kind of dropped in business around here. And then in the, in the fall and the Christmas time and in the winter, that's yeah. when you get more business in the wintertime. So Everybody it's, shows it's, up. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, what, let's see, let's, what's my next question here? So some of the themes in your work, let's talk about the themes of your, your. I, I uh, create my artwork from places I go and, and how I feel about things and, and mm -hmm. where I've been and where I go, you know, you, you can't be able to get out there and experience and you got to get outside of your studio, you got to go outdoors and, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, into the Thousand Islands. I go into the Adirondack Mountains. I've done a lot of work of the Adirondack Mountains. Um, I, I think I kind of am a winter lover. I like to get out and ski and mm -hmm. cross country ski and ice fish even years ago. And um, so I do I, know that you've you've submitted a number of pieces in the past and had them on exhibit here of winter scenes, which is I've got a lot present. of yeah, I've got yeah. a lot of winter scenes. Painting snow yeah. is not easy. So and you're very. Yeah. I think you have the. Um, What's it called? The time stop? Is that the piece behind you there? And I know that there's, I think that's um, a winter scene. I don't yeah. Know this one here, that's the Time Warp Cavern in the winter. Time yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was kind of fun. A friend of mine wanted me to paint that. And, and yeah. she's actually in the painting. And, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, she wanted she wanted a scene in the winter um, of the reflections of the, of the melting snow and things like that. So I Yeah, yeah. That and, oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. Um, so who are some of your biggest influences, would you say? Uh, I would say the, the Impressionists, you know, mm -hmm. the guy, Renoir, and uh, other Impressionists. Um, you know, the, I, I love their spontaneity and their color and their, mm -hmm. their Impressionism. And uh, I've tried to get less architectural and try and employ some of their techniques and things. Mm -hmm into my art when I can out. Actually doing doing a little plug for the museum. Currently in one of our galleries, we have the work of Larry Tack, who is an early American Impressionist painter. So if you haven't seen him yet, you might want to swing by. Um, oh, I will, yeah. His, his, his work is stunning. And um, like a lot of early Impressionists, you can see the strokes and like there's almost like blocks of color that just merge together to form this like fabulous piece. Yeah. And it isn't just the color, it's the composition and how they yeah. And, yeah. You know, it created uh, positive and negative spaces in their in their compositions. Yeah, them. it's fabulous. And the atmospheric perspective, how they go back into the real hues of blue and purples in the yeah. distance. Of things. And there's some really interesting um, perspective. He has a few, uh, uh, I would say, not city scenes, but of, of buildings and things that are, have some very interesting architecture perspective that's that's yeah. neat to look at yeah um well we're almost here at the end of our interview but um before i go bringing up orion just one more time let's um let's tell anybody who hasn't visited before what are your hours and who else is there we've got 12 artists right now um uh i i, I don't think i uh, wrote down all of them but but you have a website and i think we, got, we have a website okay. yes orion art gallery or www.orion-artgallery.com. Okay. And all of our artists are listed on there under artists. And you, that's where you can see probably more of my work is that I'm one of okay. the artists listed on that website. Okay. And uh, we've got some great artists that come here and work with us all the time. Kat Mirand, mm -hmm. Uh mm -hmm. she's kind of a super retired farmer in the area here. She's got a great display here. Uh, Christy Hoover, a yeah. uh, ceramic artist. Uh, she's probably our number one class instructor. And yeah, you ready. have you have a kiln there, right? You moved. We the have kiln a kiln there, yeah, yeah. Perfect. And, yeah, and, and, and we're really trying to build up that program because it's, yeah. it's it's really creative and uh, people really like it a lot. 
We're doing so anybody in Watertown well. can swing through and yeah. pick up a class in ceramics. Yeah. That's fabulous. We've got other classes, figure drawing. Christy teaches figure drawing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually begin doing an oil class. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, that would be on Fridays, I think, mm -hmm. 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And all your classes are listed on the website too, I'm assuming. Yeah, we have a, a, a large variety of different mediums and artists, techniques, and styles. We've got um, Alice Elizabeth. I, I wish I could scan over and show you some of these things. <laughs> she's a, a New York City native, cool. and her work yeah. is more cosmopolitan for sure. Yeah. Um, Stephen Yazzie is a retired architect. He's got a pastel display here. He's a yeah. wonderful pastel artist. I'm just looking at some of them here. We've got Laura Kopsack. Um, she wasn't even a watercolorist a few years ago in Clayton, mm -hmm. took one of my classes and hey. from there, she's really grown into quite a watercolor. Oh, that's fabulous. Here. Yeah. Um, and I'm just kind of glancing around. I'm trying to catch everybody. I know I'm missing some, but, um, we've mm -hmm. got, uh, Mel Melissa Cocomello. She does mixed mediums and a, a lot of handcrafted jewelry. We've got some handcrafted jewelry. Here. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I saw. Is she she has a class in uh, wire wrap jewelry, maybe something. Right, like that. she is having yeah. a class in wire wrap jewelry. Yeah, yeah. And then I've got my two partners that uh, we're partners in the gallery. Garrett McCarthy, mm -hmm. uh, you must have heard seen mm -hmm. some of the Garrett McCarthy. Yeah, really well known yeah. mural artist in the area here, so and fair. Suzanne McDermott from Governor. Mm -hmm. and she has some digital enhanced uh, artwork here in a wall over. I know you can't see it, but <laughs> but it's there. Take a look at it all. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's it's really, great. it's really, um, you know, it's exciting to work with all these different artists and have them yeah. see yeah. the different techniques and mediums they use. Yeah. So, uh, so one more question, and that is, what are your hours? Should somebody want to come and visit? We are open on Wednesdays, uh, Thursdays, and Fridays from uh, normally from eleven in the morning until four in the afternoon. Okay. And um, when when we have a ceramic program active and going or a figure drawing class and things. We stayed up until six o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Saturdays, uh, 11 till five. Mm -hmm. And Sundays were open uh, 12 to three. Okay. And okay. sometimes those hours fluctuate a little bit mm -hmm. because uh, we, we only have a few people that actually, you know, sit here and watch the gallery. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we don't have anybody, we might, you know, we might kind of keep the doors closed. for Right, a, right, right. Until somebody else comes in. Yeah. And I spend a lot of time here. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. I know it's weird to say this, but the holidays are around the corner. So I'm, I'm thinking everybody out there who might have um, a need for some art should swing through before the holidays. It's a perfect gift to give. And the right. gallery's full of fa fabulous pieces, just waiting, right. waiting for its owner. So, and I just got word that I had a piece accepted into your. Art you show. did, yes, yes. So, also, oh. um, right around the corner for us is the Along the River's Edge exhibition, and the, uh, the congratulations have just all been sent out, and Bill will be exhibiting here with us again. So, congratulations on that. And I, and I have a watercolor, right? Yeah, and you have a watercolor. Yeah. So come, yeah. come to the gallery here and see okay. Bill's work and see it there at Orion. And thank you so much for um, joining us and being our artist spotlight this month, Bill. And we we love your work. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks. And um, we'll see everybody at next month's Artist Spotlight. Bye. Yeah, bye.